Former U.S. President Donald Trump finds himself facing criminal charges, all while actively campaigning for a return to presidency. The latest incitement alleges that Trump conspired to subvert the 2020 election results. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has been hit with criminal charges for the third time in just four months. The charges come as he actively campaigns to regain the presidency in the upcoming elections. The latest indictment, consisting of four counts, resolves around allegations that Trump conspired to subvert the 2020 election results that led to President Joe Biden's victory. The indictment accuses Trump of working to defraud the nation by impeding Congress from certifying Biden's win and denying voters their right to a fair election process. Trump has been summoned to appear in federal court this Thursday. The accusations stem from an investigation led by special counsel Jack Smith, who has been probing Trump's alleged attempts to overturn his loss to Democratic rival Joe Biden. Prosecutors counted that Trump knowingly propaganded the false claims of election fraud despite being aware of their falseness. The assertion is that he did this intentionally to sow souths of doubt and mistrust in the election system and to stoke anger, ultimately shaking public faith in the election's legitimacy. In response, the Trump campaign issued a statement asserting the former president's commitment to the law. The campaign categorized the indictment as a political motivated prosecution, drawing parallels to the dark times in history, such as Nazi Germany. While these charges could potentially solidify Trump's base and soar up his position within the Republican Party as he strives for the nomination, strategists predict they might have more limited impact during the general elections. The challenge will lie in appealing to moderate Republicans and independents who may be more skeptical about his legal charges. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative. Available on the web, Android, and Apple. Iran is running scared over reports of a potential normalization deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Tehran is warning that a deal between Washington, Riyadh, and Jerusalem would negatively impact what it calls regional peace and security. Now to be Steve Leibovich reports. Iran fears potential Israeli-Saudi normalization. The remarks by the foreign ministry in Tehran opened with a scathing attack on U.S. President Joe Biden, accusing him of spearheading efforts to strengthen ties between Jerusalem and Riyadh. According to the Iranian regime, normalization of ties between Israel and Saudi Arabia would adversely impact regional peace and stability. <laughs> Amid Washington's intensifying efforts toward normalization between the Saudis and Israel, a simmering dispute between Riyadh and Tehran over a vast gas field in the Persian Gulf could escalate into a major crisis. The Dura gas field, situated in the neutral zone between Kuwait, Iran and Saudi Arabia is contested by Saudi Arabia, while Iran staunchly maintains its ownership. Iran issued a stern warning yesterday, asserting that any violation of its rights to the gas field would not be tolerated. To back up its claim, the Iranian Navy unveiled new vessels, which they claim are equipped with missiles, with a range of 600 kilometers. And now to unveil the geopolitical chessboard, we're now joined by senior fellow at FDD, Brigadier General Reserves Professor Yaakov Nagel. Yaakov, the Iranians are now weighing in on the potential of U.S. broker normalization between Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia. Are the prospects really heating up? Look, uh, first of all, uh, it's good that the Iranians are uh, worried because they think that we have a uh, with Saudi and the United States, but I won't give to it too much uh, attention. Uh, there are things that are happening behind the scenes between the uh, U.S., uh, Saudi, Israel, 
But unfortunately, there are also things that are happening uh, behind the scenes between the United States and uh, Iran, talking about the so-called understandings, so-called giving the Iranians a win-win situation to stay in the 60% enrichment and to give almost nothing and to get money. So they are getting money not to enrich to 90% that they don't even be, they don't even want to do it. So about the the normalization between uh, Saudi and Israel, it's very, very important. I wish it will happen. It will be, some people call it the jewel of the Nile or the, the, the crown jewel. I, I, don't, I, I don't know how you call it, but in, uh, never mind. And it was one of the three uh, points that the Prime Minister Netanyahu put on his agenda when he was elected. He said, I want to finish once uh, in the day. It's the, the problem of the nuclear Iran. Then I want to add Saudi to what we call the Abraham Accords. Of course, if Saudi will come in, it will be much, much bigger than Saudi, uh, uh, the Abraham Accords, and to deal with Israeli internal uh, issues. But we should not uh, confuse ourselves. Yes. This is the order. So it's Iran, and then Saudi, and then other things. So uh, if you read my papers, uh, op-eds with the FDD, it's written there very, very, very carefully. Israel should not pay for uh, an agreement or a trilateral agreement or bilateral or two bilaterals. I don't care. Israel, U.S., Saudi, we should not pay uh, by concessions on nuclear, not concessions on Iranian nuclear program and not concessions allowing Saudi in the saying that they want a civilian nuclear program that I don't uh, object. But uh, for, for a civilian nuclear program, you don't need an enrichment on your uh, soil. Yes, so Yaakov. We should, not, we, we should not give up. Sure. Now, looking at the triangle, uh, you know, Iran and Saudi Arabia just recently normalized their own relations, and they opened embassies in each other's capital cities. Might normalization with Israel put a damper in those ties? You know, uh, the Saudis uh, looked around and they saw that the United States and Israel are not uh, bringing the merchandise, the goods to the table. So they are looking and they are working and I understand them, it's legitimate. They are working according to their interests. So they are going all over the, the place and they uh, opened again their relations with uh, Iran. I, again, I'm not going, I, I don't want uh, anyone to... Uh, uh, mis, uh, miscalculate or misunderstand or mis-evaluate it, it's important. But some people saying that it's all a charade. Some people say that it's a, a way of the Saudis maybe to influence Iran from internal by pouring some money to their economy. I'm not sure this is the situation. The Iranians are opening all the gates. I think that if the Iran Iranians will get what they want from the United States, from Israel, from a trilateral, then I, I'm not saying they will uh, cancel or, or delete their relations with Iran. Maybe the Iranians will do it, but for, for sure they will be on a, on a lower level. Uh, we have to uh, continue to follow it. We have to continue to monitor it. Uh, the, the, the Saudis is, uh, are very, uh, you know, standalone and independent country. They are very wealthy. Uh, Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, yeah. as, they, as they call him, very smart guy. He, he understands that the future of Saudi is towards the West, but he's not cutting uh, ties with uh, with uh, Iran, with Russia, with yeah, even Coven, China. I have to ask you. I have to ask you. Know, you know, the Chinese offer to buy his oil if he, if he's willing to to uh, get the money in Chinese uh, in Chinese money. Unfortunately, for the United States, he said no. As I understand. Yaakov, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for your insights. Thank you very much. Thank you. France's diplomatic intervention seeks to defuse Israel Hezbollah tensions. The threat of conflict looms. France reportedly steps in as a mediator, urging restraint and consensus amidst escalating tensions along the northern border in Israel. Now, TV's William Sharon reports. In a bid to avert a potential military clash along the northern border, France stepped in to mediate between Israel and Hezbollah, as reported this morning by Israeli media. 
former French minister Jean-Yves Le Drian, acting as an envoy for President Emmanuel Macron, held a crucial meeting with representatives from Hezbollah in Beirut on Tuesday. The primary message conveyed was for all parties involved to exercise restraint and prevent any escalation of tensions. The impetus for this mediation came after Israeli Minister Eli Cohen's visit to Paris, during which Israel communicated its concerns. Afterwards, France pledged its intervention in the situation. Key discussions during Ladrian's engagement centered on the search for a consensus on Lebanon's next president, a position vacated for nine months. Saudi Arabia and the United States are also actively involved in reconciliation endeavors within the country.